Saturday marks 10 years since Hurricane Katrina slammed into Mississippi and New Orleans. One of the most unforgettable images was of the tens of thousands of people crammed into the Superdome. Scott Walker from WDSU shows us how the iconic building survived the storm. The Superdome. Before the block that shook its foundation. Before it played host to an NFC championship game. Before Mercedes-Benz bought the naming rights. Before immense joy. There was unbearable pain. The Superdome was a living hell for the 30,000 people inside in the days following Katrina. And people, you know, they want answers. They want to be able to get out. They want, they're, they're uncomfortable. There was no running water, no functioning toilets, no HVAC, uh, cramped conditions, hot and humid. Every square inch of this building had been touched by water. Doug Thornton, executive vice president for SMG, the company that manages the Superdome, was inside through it all. And I thought, it's over. We'll never be back here. I mean, how can we survive? As bad as it was in the immediate aftermath, things were about to get a lot worse. The water had uh, risen to almost five feet in, on Porridge Street and about three and a half to four feet on Gerard Street, and it was it had seeped through uh, the doors and all the crevices into our central plant and elevated up to almost 10 inches. The Superdome had been on generator power for two days, and everyone was now on high alert because of a dire warning from then police superintendent Eddie Compass. And he said, um, there's nothing more we can do here. Um, you need to get your families out because I'm afraid that we're going to have more flooding. They can't stop uh, the water from coming into the levees. There's going to be more levee breaches. There could be eight feet, as much as eight feet of water tonight, eight more than what you have. And Thornton says at the dome there was no room to spare. If the water had climbed another few inches, the Superdome's generator would have been overcome by water and the 30,000 people inside plunged into total darkness and utter chaos. Uh, you have a panic situation on your hands and people won't know how to get out of the building. I mean, literally, you wouldn't be able to see your hand in front of your face. Thornton says he and his team kept the potentially dire situation confidential. Then the decision was made to mark the current water level to see if it would actually go up. You know, we know where it is right now. It's got to go another three to four inches before it hits the generator. This part of the wall in the central plant at the bottom of the Superdome was updated with markings every 30 minutes. We marked that water for the next four days, and it turns out the chief was wrong. The, My goodness. the water rose two inches and stopped. And because the generator survived, really, so did the dome. For me, it was probably the scariest moment. Um, and it was one of those tipping points, I think, uh, in this whole um, disaster. If we lose power, full power in here, we could have had a terrible loss of life. And if Thornton has his way, the watermarks will never go anywhere. I've told our guys that, to me, that uh, those watermarks are part of history, and we should never erase that. An incredible story. Again, Saturday marks 10 years since Hurricane Katrina hit Mississippi. We have an hour-long special airing right here on 16 WAPT. Hurricane Katrina, 10 years later, airs this Sunday at 6 p.m.